Good morning or uh, good afternoon, depending on where in the world you are right now. Um, my name is Barry Sullivan from the Cardiff School of Engineering. I look after admissions here in, in, and international development for the School of Engineering. And with me I have uh, Dr. Johnny Lees, who is the course director for the MSc in Wireless and Microwave Communications. Uh, Dr. Lees, can you briefly introduce yourself, please? Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, as Barry said, my name is Dr. Johnny Lees, and uh, I'm the course director for the MSc in Wireless and Microwave Engineering here at Cardiff. Um, okay, do you want me to go into more detail, Barry? Or? Well, first, I guess I should just apologize to our viewers. We were supposed to start uh, 24 minutes ago, um, but we had a few technical difficulties trying to get one of our recent graduates of the course online, uh, who's now doing his PhD with us. He may join us uh, eventually, but we wanted to get this out as close to 10 o'clock uh, British summertime as possible. But yeah, Dr. Lees, if you could maybe introduce a bit more about your background and how you uh, came to be the course leader for this wireless. MSC. Okay, so I, I guess the first thing to say, which is quite interesting, is that um, I started my uh, academic career at Cardiff University. So I did the very MSc uh, that I'm, uh, I'm directing now, and that was about 10 years ago. Uh, but before that time, I, I spent, I, I guess, 10 years working in UK industry um, after doing my first degree in Swansea University in Wales. So um, I, I come to the MSc with, with rather a, in a unique perspective because I always tell the students when they, when they enroll that I've actually been through the thing that they're going through or just about to go through. Um, so I try to bring that experience and, and uh, understanding in, into the program that I'm running. Um, so uh, that's really my, my background. The other part of what I do is heavily research related. So I'm doing lots of research around microwaves and microwave applications. Um, and I'm, the rest of my time, if I have any time left, it's, it's teaching. So uh, that's really me in a nutshell. Okay. Uh, thank you for that introduction. And um, well, it's good to see that somebody enjoyed the MSc as much as, as you did and has stuck around to now be the leader for it. Um, we've got a number of questions we want to get to that some of our offer holders have submitted in advance. Um, so we want to keep this to about 10 or 15 minutes, but maybe if you could briefly introduce us to the course technical content. What sort of stuff does this MSc cover? Um, the, the, the MSc is, is, a, is it's, it's, it's quite focused on um, microwave communications and applications of microwaves in industry today. So at Cardiff, we have a, a, a very good core of active researchers who are looking at applications of microwave engineering, and the MSc tries to reflect and to draw upon that, that experience and that teaching excellence uh, and, and, and embody it in the MSc. So just to give you a flavor of the sort of modules that we have that we teach, we teach fundamentals of RF and, uh, and microwave, or radio frequency and microwave engineering. Um, I'm involved with, with, with that module, so I, I'm, I'm teaching that with a colleague. Um, we look at elect electromagnetics. Um, these are all advanced modules, um, and we're, we're looking at how electromagnetic theory actually plays a role in, in the communication process itself. Um, we have um, other modules looking at advanced communication systems, so we're looking at, uh, um, at how mobile phones actually work today. Um, and all of these modules are really linked in with uh, major industries. So for example, um, there's one module where we introduce students to the concept of mobile communications at an advanced level, um, but that is heavily influenced by Nokia, for example. So Nokia supply us with absolute state-of-the-art information in terms of base stations, um, an actual base station itself, and how that base station is designed what the environmental impacts of that base station are, so it's quite, quite, it's quite wide-reaching in that sense. So the, just to summarize, really, the, 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 the course addresses the fundamental concepts of microwave engineering, microwave communications, and applications of microwaves, but also becomes quite specific in, in the, um, the projects and, and the, the, the practical challenges then that we address through, through student projects later in the year. So it's, um, it's, it's very wide-ranging in that sense. Okay. Um, you, you mentioned briefly that some of the uh, world-leading researchers we have. I know we've got a number of famous professors that teach on this course and in this area. Um, can you share for some of our viewers who might have maybe read their books uh, overseas in their courses who, who these professors are? Yeah, I guess we, in, in terms of teaching excellence, we, we um, as I said earlier, 
I think one of the unique selling points of the MSC is that it's built around our research, research strengths. And in terms of academic excellence and research excellence, we have three professors that we really um, exploit in that way. The, the first is a guy called um, Professor Steve Cripps. Um, now, Steve Cripps has been with Cardiff University now for, I guess, I guess about five years. Um, he has spent all of his life in, in um, the mobile phone and the, the, specifically the mobile phone power amplifier industry, uh, developing amplifiers and also delivering um, courses to industry. And he is recognized as, I guess, the authority in power amplifier design. Um, so we're lucky enough to have Steve here, and he is actively engaged in the MSc. Um, he's only engaged in the MSc, actually, so he's not teaching undergrads, for example. So he's completely focused on the MSc. Uh, and he is running research projects, and, and those research projects are MSE-related as well. So if you talk to anybody, basically, in the PA world, in the power amplifier world, in the microwave power amplifier world, he, everybody will know who Steve is. So um, he, he's great. The other guys, there's a guy called Paul Tasker, Professor Paul Tasker. Um, Paul is, is world-renowned uh, in, in the area of um, microwave amplifier uh, design using modeling, advanced modeling techniques. So it's, an, it's another core area that our research is based on here, uh, where we take transistors from all sorts of guys who make transistors. Um, IBM, for example, um, 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 Freescale, uh, some of you guys might have heard of these people, but um, that they actually make the transistors that go into your mobile phones, and they go into mobile phones base, base stations. So we do a lot of work with these guys, characterizing their transistors. And that's Paul Tasker's area, and he really understands transistors very, very well in that sense. And then the other guy um, is Professor Adrian Porch, and he's arguably the you know, European, if not world, uh, um, authority in um, uh, aspects of electromagnetics to do with microwave resonators and microwave applications. And you can use resonators for all sorts of things, sensing, heating. And we've got some really exciting work going on at the moment um, using these techniques to, um, to look at bacteria and how we can open them up and look at their DNA how we can use um, uh, microwave sensors for detecting blood glucose. So there's, there's many, many applications, Barry, that you know, we're using uh, microwaves for. It's not just communications. It's, it's all sorts of things now. Right. A a applicable to a, a wide, wide uh, variety of, of areas, then, I would say. Yeah. OK. Um, maybe if you could talk to us about what sort of academic or professional background uh, students need to have in order to be successful on the course. OK, so on, on paper, what we're looking for, um, uh, we have to remember this is an advanced course, and so we're looking for um, a UK 2-1 equivalent qualification. Um, so that, that is the, the fundamental requirements. Um, but at the same time, we, we are conscious that people come from all different backgrounds, um, uh, all different ages, with different experiences. So we, you know, we factor those things in. So we, if, you, if you have a, a very good uh, so let's say a uh, very good relevant project activity from your university, looking at RF, microwaves, um, um, maybe network type technologies, then that's relevant experience and that, that can count towards you know, your, your acceptability, if you like, to the, to the program. Um, similarly, if you've been out of education for a good few years and, and you have a good, good degree uh, and you have a lot of industrial experience which is related, then that can be a real help as well. I think the thing we want more than anything is for when guy, you know, when students arrive here, we want them to succeed, um, and it's important to us that the students have the right skill set when, when when they actually arrive. Okay, so, uh, but we can look at it. We're pretty flexible, I think, in the way that we um, assess people's qualifications and experience. Okay, and in speaking about um, sort of typical backgrounds of students, where where do you, now, how long have you been involved with this course um, as an academic? As an academic, I've been involved, I guess, for five or six years teaching on it, uh, running labs, and then for the last two years I've been course director. Okay. And where, where do our students for this MSc generally come from? Where in the world? Uh, I think one of, the, one of the unique things about the MSc is, is that we get students from everywhere. And um, even going back to when I did my MSc ten years ago, I think... Um, there were 14 or 15 students there, and they were pretty much from all, all you know, different countries, everybody. So we, we have students from China. At the moment, on the current cohort, we have students from China. We have students from India. Um, we have students from Malaysia. Um, we have students um, 
from last year, from Azerbaijan, from Nepal, um, uh, Pakistan. Okay, so it, it's from anywhere, basically. So, uh, and that, I think that's one of the great things about the MSC is that it takes a group of people from around the world and, and turns them into a, um, a team, uh, and they go out then and they address this MSC. Great. Uh, maybe we'll we'll turn to Twitter now. We had a couple of uh, questions submitted via Twitter. Uh, Emmanuel Ringo wants to know: uh, Will we have several visits to relevant industry professionals? That, that's a really good question, and I think it really it makes me happy to, to to hear that sort of question because one of the things we're trying to improve and have improved in the MSC is our industrial access and our industrial relevance. So. The MSC over the last three years has, has, has changed pretty much uh, along those lines. So we have six or seven uh, key industrial partners right now who are involved with the MSC. So the answer to the question is, is really the, the industry tends to come to us. So we have industry-relevant lectures. Uh, uh, they will be delivered by people, for example, such as Panasonic, um, Nokia, um, Ericsson, Okay, so a, a lot of these guys will come and tell you, tell our students about what's happening, you know, in industry at the moment, what's relevant. Um, so that works really well. The other side to the coin then is the projects that we will give to our MSc students later in their program are generally industry uh, related as well. So, for example, we have um, two projects at the moment um, running with Panasonic, and the students will go to Panasonic um, and they will work with the guys up there on on on. on High efficiency microwave ovens. Okay, so this is the thing that's going to affect us all. You know, in the future, is everything needs to become much higher efficiency. So that that's a pretty neat project. Um, yeah, we're working with other guys all around the world, really, in terms of industrial in, uh, engagement. We're working with a company called NXP in in the Netherlands. Um, again, looking at to develop MSC projects around the transistor technology and how that can be best used. Um, we have a current student who is um, doing a project with a company called EADS. Um, I know, I'm not sure how many people would have heard of EADS, but they're probably the, one of the, the UK's <laughs> biggest uh, defense-related organizations. Okay, so it's, uh, um, that student has a desk in EADS for one day a week. and uh, So he's down there one day a week working with the guys there. And, and that's what I call industry engagement, really. So it, it's, uh, it's a real focus for the MSC. Right. And EADS owns Boeing, right? Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. The other company we're, we're working with is Airbus, by the way. So uh, it's uh, there's a lot of big players that. that are oh, sorry, they, EADS owns Airbus, don't they? No, no, that's another I... company that Cardiff are involved with. So okay. I think it's, uh, that would be quite difficult for EADS to own those two organisations. No, I know they didn't own both, but I couldn't remember which. <laughs> which uh, right? Okay, um, you mentioned student projects. Um, I think we've had. A couple of our students have been quite successful uh, winning some awards with their projects recently. Do you want to give any examples of, of those? Um, MSC projects, um, yeah, I mean, we, we have a few internal awards that we, we give to students, but I think the ones you're talking about, Barry, uh, there's a student who unfortunately can't join us today. His name is Zul. Um, he comes from Malaysia. He's now doing a PhD with us. Um, but he won a pretty prestigious award at um, uh, 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 it's the largest microwave conference that we well that we attend in the world. Um, it's called uh, Microwave Techniques, um, and it's based it, it travels all around America basically, and, and there are many thousands of delegates that attend that conference. So he won a prestigious um, award um, that basically fund is it, it's funding him I think about fifteen fifteen hundred dollars. Um, he gets to go to the conference for free. He has to, well, as part of that award, he had to generate a paper, a research paper, and present uh, present something. Okay, so it it's not free money. He has to do things for it. But um, that that's really that that's a very prestigious award that he's won, and that's on the basis of his MSc project. So he was looking at developing micro instrumentation, basically, for that. Um, other awards, I guess, that we won that were that are related to the MSc. Uh, there was a competition. Um, two years ago now called the NXP Design Challenge and um, we had four students basically who were related with the MSC there who went off um, again to a similar type of conference and they competed with uh, teams uh, basically all over the world and they were looking at novel uses of, of microwave energy in that way or novel uses of microwave devices and they built a little tiny microwave oven effectively that could, that could heat up little tiny bits of water 
and uh, that got them through, and they came second worldwide. Okay, so this is uh, Europe initially Europe competing with India and China, and then out of all of those teams, they came together and they came second. So that was a great that was a great result for us. Oh, that's excellent. Um, going back to the question the questions on Twitter, uh, another one was. What measures are there to support final year projects, uh, speaking of projects, if they mature into new patents? Wow, that's, uh, that's a good question as well. Um, Do you think this would be a bit more relevant for the entrepreneur, entrepreneurship MSc that's related to this? It could be, it could be, but I think what, one important thing to point out is the university is always looking for um, innovation and creativity in wherever, wherever we can find it. And, Student projects are a great resource for that. So, um, generally speaking, there's a very good framework that's available to academics and students if they come up with ideas and, and through whatever means, through projects or just ideas. Um, and if we think that idea has commercial merit, then we go straight to our commercial division, and they will look at, they will look firstly to see um, if that is a viable idea, and if it is, they will then look to see right whose idea is it. And um, if it, for example, is the student's idea and the supervisor's idea together, then the, we can find ourselves in a situation where that, that uh, intellectual property is, is basically shared between the academic and the student. So the, the terms are very favorable for the student in this situation if you know, it can be shown, really, that the ideas have come from the student. So it's a complex environment, I think, when you get into intellectual property. But the bottom line is the university is a very, very good support mechanism, and it, uh, it, it looks at student contribution in a very serious way. Okay? So um, it doesn't tend to happen because the projects come from the, the supervisor, but it's not unheard of for a student to turn up with a project that he wants or she wants to do, and we can develop that project. Okay? And if that project holds uh, novelty and, and intellectual property, we can develop that as well through, through the mechanisms here. So um, it's a healthy environment for creativity and intellectual property, and we will promote that wherever we can. Great. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Johnny. Um, I guess you know, for a lot of our students, they are going to be doing this MSc, uh, and ultimately, they want to make themselves more employable. So the end goal, I think, is is getting a good job. I know a number of our uh, MSc graduates do stay on to do PhDs with us. Um, but what other destinations have some of our recent graduates gone on to do? You know, are they working? Um, okay, I think that's that's, that's uh, the th the first thing to be clear of clear about is is yes, it's the sort of destination for our, PA, our, our MSc students splits into a sort of research or an industry um, route, and so yeah, a lot of our students do end up doing PhDs with us, and they go on to do uh, different things. But specifically talking about the MSCs who go into industry, um, uh, last year, for example, we uh, we had a guy. Well, going back maybe two years, we had a guy who went into a company called Cambridge Silicon Radio. I don't know if you've heard of these guys. They make Bluetooth chipsets and GPS chipsets that go into mobile phones. Okay, so the chances are that's what's in yours. Right. Um, if you've got GPS in your phone, Barry, I'm not sure if you have. Yeah. But if you have, if you have it, it will probably be. Um, a CSR-based chipset. So he went off after his MSc. He actually did a PhD, uh, but after his PhD, he's now in CSR, and he's a pretty senior guy in, in, in CSR. Um, um, other guys we've got who have done MSCs, we have a uh, last year, or well, the year before, actually, there we had a Pakistani guy who, who uh, graduated with a good PhD. Uh, sorry, a good MSc, and he's now working, uh, I think, for Vodafone in Pakistan. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if he's in research or he's, if he's in operational development at the moment, but he's doing pretty well out there. Another guy last year from Azerbaijan. Um, again, he's, he's gone. Uh, he's working for Vodafone, too, actually, in Azerbaijan, and, and he is very involved with net network optimization. Um, so I think whichever route students follow, either into a PhD and then on to industry, or through or directly into into industry, they do pretty well. Um, certainly, and I try my best to keep in touch with these guys using Facebook and another another me, you know social media tool. Um, but it's always interesting to see that you know they end up in, in good positions in good companies, and that's really what what that's really what we're trying to do with this MSc. We're trying to employ you know improve employability and generate you know. 
uh, independent thinking engineers for, for, for the future. Really. So, uh, yeah, so it's, it's pleasing to me to see the, these guys getting good jobs. Good. Um, well, if I could just summarize some of the points that I heard there, and, uh, you know, please feel free to jump in at the end and, and let me know what else we want to make clear. But I definitely heard that we've got world-leading uh, academics that are involved in teaching this MSc and working closely with what is really a small group of, of students. Yeah. Um, the MSc is industrial focused, so we, we do have a lot of input from industry and uh, we've got, our students have good job uh, prospects and we've got very supportive staff and a supportive cohort of students uh, working together as a, as a team. So those are the key messages I took away. Is there anything else that you think we should let the students know about? Um, I guess may, maybe to stress what I think is a really important and un, unique aspect of the MSc and it's the, the bringing together of a bunch of international students and the way those students bond and, and form a, a very close group and how that group then helps itself you know, th through the academic um, process, through, through exams and then through into the project phase itself because you know, it's an advanced program, and it's 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 tough. Okay, it it needs to be because it's it, it's a really good degree. Okay, we pride ourselves on that. Um, but the 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 the, the, pro, the the group of students itself is a really important tool, and I, I I speak from experience because I was part of this MSc. Remember, and uh, I don't see that so much in other MSCs and in other institutions, but it's very much part of our MSc, and it's thing and something we. Um, we are, you know, we, we work very hard to, to, to solidify and, 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 to, and, and, to, and to focus on. Okay. But I think that's it. I think you've covered, you summed up pretty well there, Barry, so I don't think we missed anything. Thank you. Well, I do apologize again uh, for those who tried to tune in at, uh, on time for being late, but we will be keeping this up on our YouTube channel and posting it to another video sharing site for our offer holders who live in parts of the world where YouTube is banned or blocked. But thanks again for your time, uh, Dr. Lees. You're very uh, welcome. And just a reminder to students, if they still do have any questions, you can get in touch with us by email or through our Twitter or Facebook feeds. Thank you again for your time, and uh, hopefully we'll see some of you guys turn and girls in September. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.